Today, I want to invite you into my kitchen to once again make a special bread, but don't worry. This is a really great beginner bread. We're gonna be making a sourdough focaccia. Don't worry if you don't have sourdough starter, you can do this with yeast as well. It's a great bread to start with. I'm gonna start with 60 grams of sourdough starter. If you don't have a sourdough starter, substitute this with a half teaspoon of yeast, 30 grams of warm water, and 30 grams of flour. To our sourdough starter or our yeast mixture, depending on what you're using, I'm going to add in 250 grams of warm water. Then we'll just mix that sourdough starter and the warm water in together with a wooden spoon. Hang in there with me. I promise you, this is actually really easy bread and it's so good. So to your starter, either yeast or sourdough and your warm water, which is now mixed together, add in 250 grams of an all-purpose flour. I'm using all-purpose einkorn flour because to me, the flavor is really unmatched, but use what flour you have on hand. What we're doing right now is mixing together what's called a leaven. Think of this as stage one. This is like a teeny little mixture of bread dough, and we're using this to wake up our yeast, whether that's in sourdough or in your active dry yeast. We're waking it up and saying, hey, get ready. We're gonna make a loaf of bread. Now this leaven can sit out on your counter at room temperature in a fairly warm spot for anywhere from really three to 12 hours. So you have a lot of leeway. So for example, if I'm gonna make this beautiful focaccia bread for dinner, I'll make my leaven in the morning after breakfast. Or if I wanna eat the focaccia for breakfast, I'll mix together the leaven the night before. Now that my leaven is made and set aside to rise, I'm gonna feed my sourdough starter. I have another video on this that I'll tag in the show notes, but I keep a dry sourdough starter, which means that I only feed my starter about once a week, depending on how much I'm baking. So all I need is 20 grams of leftover starter. And then to that, I add 130 grams of warm water, which is about a cup and 120 grams of all purpose einkorn flour, which again is about a cup. This is the only time during the week that I feed my sourdough starter. I just mix it together, add it into a fresh container and let it sit out to get bubbly and to rise and to activate and then slip it into my fridge and grab out a little piece whenever I need it. It's really not complicated. I know sourdough can be overwhelming, but I hope that this focaccia bread recipe shows you that it really doesn't have to be something that holds you back from doing sourdough. So you can see my leaven was a lot wetter than my dry sourdough starter. This is the point in mixing my starter where I like to just mix it with my hands. It's an opportunity for me to say hello to the starter and reintroduce myself once again. Now remember, this sourdough starter doesn't really have anything to do with the leaven, which you can see in the pot behind my hands. That leaven is back there, already working away, already waking up that yeast. This is just time for me in my kitchen to make sure that my sourdough starter is attended to. So really that's it. Takes me about 45 seconds to feed my sourdough starter. And again, I only feed this starter about once a week. After the leaven has had time to activate and to get bubbly, I'm now going to add in about 500 grams of warm water. Mm -hmm. 
and about 100 grams of a nice olive oil. Now, because this is the way I learned to make focaccia in Italy, I'm also gonna add in a couple tablespoons of a nice white wine and mix it all together with a wooden spoon. You can see so far we're only one bowl in. I use the same bowl to rise my leaven and to mix my bread in. Now to our mixture goes 960 grams of all-purpose flour. If this sounds like a gigantic loaf, that's because I have a lot of mouths to feed. The recipe can easily be halved. To give you context, 960 grams is about eight cups of flour. And then last but not least, four teaspoons of a good sea salt. One of the reasons that focaccia is such a great bread to start with is because it really doesn't require kneading or shaping or really any experience at all. It's so forgiving. Even if you don't get your rise times perfect, it's just not a big deal. It just tastes so good. And we're gonna just press it down into a pan, get little dimples from our fingertips, and it's gonna be delicious. So now cover your focaccia once again and let it rise in a warm place for maybe two to three hours. I like to do this on top of my espresso machine because it really is a nice warm location. I would like to invite you to join the Elliott Homestead cooking community at cook.theelliotthomestead.com. This is for home cooks out there who would love some new inspiration, ideas, and motivation to get going in the kitchen. Each month, I create five brand new recipes inspired by what is in season around our farm. But don't worry, you don't have to have a farm to enjoy this beautiful food. You can have these recipes delivered to you digitally or physically if you live within the United States. Recipes will range from entrees to side dishes to desserts, breads, vegetables, salads, everything in between. Then I'll guide you through the recipes with a long, in-depth cooking video showing you new skills and encouraging you as you give these recipes a try in your own kitchen, whether you're cooking for yourself or you're cooking for a crowd. The Elliott Homestead Cooking Community is here to inspire and nourish your family. We're going to teach you to bake, to use sourdough, to try new ingredients, to really fall in love with good food again. Visit cook.theelliothomestead.com for more information. When it's time for the baking of the focaccia, and this is the part that I think is really great. It's great if you're an experienced bread maker, but it's really great if you're a new bread maker. We're just gonna oil a baking sheet with some olive oil. You can see the dough has sort of risen, it's gone bubbly, it's gone really soft, and we're just gonna scrape it in. There's no shaping required. I think I probably should have chosen a bigger pan for this loaf. You can use a big pan and press your focaccia nice and thin if you want it a little bit crispy, or you can use a thicker pan. In fact, I make focaccia in cast iron skillets a lot and get it really nice and thick. But what I'm gonna do is just use slightly damp hands to press the focaccia dough so that it's evenly spaced on the pan, letting my fingers leave little imprints in the dough. Now, 
Now, if you're in a rush, you can actually bake this right now in a 425 degree oven until it's nice and golden and cooked all the way through. If you have a little bit of time, you can cover it and let it rise at room temperature for another hour and a half or two hours. So like I said, you actually have a lot of wiggle room when it comes to focaccia. If you give it a little bit more resting time, you will end up with a chewier, more elastic, obviously more risen dough. If you bake it just like this, right out of the gate, it's gonna be a little bit denser, not quite as chewy, but still delicious. So top your focaccia with whatever you like, a generous pinch of sea salt, an extra drizzle of olive oil, fresh herbs, dried herbs, canned cherry tomatoes, slices of purple onion, whatever your heart desires. you'll probably end up baking it for around 25 to 30 minutes. There are lots of meals where I make what I call a loaded focaccia. And that's this exact recipe, but for the toppings, I add on lots of different cheeses or cured meats or roasted bell peppers. So it really comes out almost more like a pizza. Tonight, we're pairing our herbed focaccia with a roasted beet salad and a lamb roast. One of the things that I really hope you see about this homemade focaccia is A, how simple it is. It's just a little bit of mixing in one bowl. Two, how easy it is to bake because it really doesn't require the shaping or any special equipment. And three, how versatile it is because it really can be the main event on your table or it can just be a really beautiful bread to eat alongside. Now, ideally, you'll let the focaccia sit for about 30 minutes in the pan to finish cooking before you serve it. Alas, some of us are just not that patient when they smell hot bread. So here we are. All in all, a very humble, a very homemade, and a very beautiful feast. The humble focaccia, my friends. I hope you love it.